Hello, and welcome back to the Rich Mind Podcast. In today's episode, October 3rd, 2024, I want to dedicate this episode to my grandson, Rowan. He turns one year old today. Uh, happy birthday, Rowan. I know you're a little too young to understand and comprehend that at this point, but hopefully in the future someday you'll hear that and uh, that'll maybe at least bring a smile to your face. But without further ado, let's move on with today's episode. So welcome back to the Rich Mind Podcast. And today, just want to dive into a little bit more of what we discussed in the previous episode. So if you have not gone and listened to the episode uh, that launched and released this last Tuesday, so the one will be just prior to this one. So whether you're listening to this on YouTube or watching this on YouTube or listening to this in the podcast, I would highly recommend you go back and listen to that one first before we move on to this. One. But if you have and you're ready to, to move on with a little bit more uh, education in terms of how I look at things. Uh, based on that episode, um, then today's going to be a great day. So one thing that I brought up in the episode, and it's been pretty impactful for me, and I, hopefully that if you can catch what I'm about to, to share with you today, really give us some thought, uh, really apply some of these ideas into your life, I think that you can really start exponentially seeing some great things happening for you. So in that episode, we talked about how, uh, and shout out to Gary Broad, which was my guest on the episode at Deep Knowledge Investing. I recommend you go subscribe to him on YouTube, find him on the socials. The links to follow him will be in the show notes or has been in the show notes for the previous episode. Definitely do that. But we talked about being a contrarian. And that's one thing he said that he was. And that's what really drew me to him when I first read that in his bio. And I took a second at the very beginning of the episode and talked about what a contrarian was to me. And I just wanted to elaborate on that a little bit deeper. Uh, because I want to encourage you uh, as a listener of the podcast, as a follower follower of myself at this point, uh, whether now or in the future, to you need to really begin to think contrarian to what's going on out there in the official narrative uh, of what's being spoken about, uh, the truths and beliefs that we're forced and fed to believe. Some of it might be true. Some of it might be accurate. But I would just encourage you to begin to question some of that. And that's what I've done uh, over the last, let's say, 15-ish years of my life, of my adult life, is that when I've been bombarded or, or confronted with an idea, especially with somebody with, that is speaking to me with certainty, I, that's one thing I look for. If someone is speaking to me with certainty, like they, they know for sure that, that something is either going is a great investment or nothing, this could never happen. Or this has never happened before, so it won't happen in the future. To me, that's certainty. And when people speak with certainty, that always is just an alarm, an alarm bell that goes off in my mind, a red flag that makes me start to question what that, that may be true, and, and it might be, but what are the opposite sides of that argument? And then I go to work to try to find what those opposite sides are. Uh, that is what makes me, in my thinking, a little bit more contrarian. Uh, that I believe most folks are, at least in my close proximity, and it might be in your close proximity as well. So I would just definitely encourage you to start to think a little contrarian. So the quote that I used in the episode, uh, it was actually a Wayne Gretzky quote that I heard a long time ago. And I might not get it 100% accurate, but the, at least share the kind of the idea and the philosophy behind it. So Wayne Gretzky, if you're not familiar, was is one of the best hockey players of all time. Whether you follow hockey or not, that's not important. It's what the message is with what he shared is what's the important piece. So he was shared at one point. He was uh, considered one of the greatest, if not the greatest of all time, was asked, you know, Wayne, why are you so successful on the ice as far as why are you able to score so many goals? Why are you able to be in the right positions at the right time? And he answered that question with, like I said, this is the impactful part. He said, I focus on skating to where the puck is going versus where the puck is. And when I heard that for the first time, I really sat there and thought about that. So I really would like for you to sit there and think about that right now. If you can just consider everything that's going on in your life, how many decisions are you reacting to versus responding to based on your current circumstances? How able are you to think out into the future uh, based on getting some information, whether it's from people that are certain or getting the flip side of, of each uh, argument, and then making the decision based on the data that you collect. Uh, how able are you to do that? 
And that's one thing that I've practiced. And I would encourage you to start to practice it as well. It takes practice, uh, just like anything. If you want to get good at anything, you need to practice. Now, I'm not proclaiming that I'm the best at it, but I would say that I'm 90% good, I would say. I don't know if that's the right way to say it or not, but I would say 90% of the time, I'm pretty accurate with my thoughts. It's even become a little bit of a joke of, of mine and my wife's that I, I'd say to her uh, that I'm usually right, but I'm usually also early, meaning I'm usually able to collect enough data from enough places from both sides of every argument, and I'm usually able to then develop a theory or an idea that allows me then to make decisions moving forward. But I'm usually correct in that theory, usually meaning, like I said, about 90% of the time. I'm not 100% accurate always, but I'm usually 100 or I'm usually about 90% accurate. But I'm usually early because I'm the, the, <laughs> the thing about life is, is it's moving fast, but it's also moving very slow. So in terms of different, uh, we talked about the financial system in that last episode with Gary Broad. So the financial system is moving very slowly. It's like the slowest train wreck in history. Uh, you can see it coming uh, if you know what to look for, uh, based on even the, some of the things we discussed in that episode, some of the things that we've discussed uh, here on this podcast in the past. If you know what's coming, or if you can see the train coming down the tracks, it's just far off in the distance. And so it's taking a long time to get there. Now, it might not take long forever, meaning it could happen very quickly all of a sudden. And that's why I want to encourage you today uh, to start thinking a little bit contrarian to the, the norm. Um, don't be afraid. It takes courage. And I get that because family, friends, uh, coworkers, uh, you name it, a lot of folks don't think the way I think. There's no doubt about it. I'll have conversations with folks and I'll start asking or saying things that are, you can tell instantly, uh, are a little bit, whether it's over somebody's head or if it totally goes against somebody's beliefs. I mean, you just get that feeling right away. And But it takes courage to stand with what you think, what you believe, the, the research that you've done. And I would encourage you to keep doing that. So today I have six different things that I want to share with you that I hope will be valuable, different ways that I look at uh, when I'm trying to be a little bit more contrarian, uh, and hopefully that you can take this information and then start to apply it in your own life. I'm also going to give you some of the resources that I use on a daily basis, or at least on a weekly basis, that I follow, folks that I follow, uh, books that I've read, that will hopefully, if you can just take action on any one of these things starting today, whether it's buying a book, going to the library, uh, downloading a podcast, watching a YouTube video, you name it. If you start the process and start practicing, start getting both sides of the argument, you can start to really start to craft a theory or an idea or a vision of your future, and you'll be more accurate with what that's going to uh, turn out to be. You'll be very surprised. Uh, I have been. It's been fun. It kind of makes life start to be a little bit more fun when you're a participant in what's going on versus just being reactive based on being pushed around with the economy, um, different people's beliefs, ideas, that sort of thing. So let's move on. Let's move on to the six, six things that I want you to think about in terms of trying to be more contrarian. So the first off is you need to focus on and reduce your emotions in terms of fighting towards or fighting for something, whether it's so the perfect example is this political season that we're in right now. I understand. I get it completely. I pay, I'm paying attention as well, but I don't allow the fighting, the he said, she said, the finger pointing, the this guy's terrible, she's terrible, he's terrible. I don't let any of that impact my emotions. I don't get emotionally charged one way or the other. Now, you, if you're on social media at all, and I assume if you're watching or listening to this, you probably are at some point. You'll see that everywhere. People are getting emotionally charged over things that, number one, they can't control. Number two, it's keeping them from focusing on and studying the things that they need to be focusing on to get them and their selves and their families prepared for the slow train wreck that I'm telling you is coming. Now, when you don't do those things, when you're emotionally charged towards something that I'm not saying it's not important because it is important. I want you to stay informed. Yes, because I'm staying informed as well. But it's reducing and eliminating the emotions as much as you possibly can to be able to start making different decisions for yourself. So practice that today. 
when you're on social media or even when you're just sitting around thinking about having a discussion with somebody, try to catch yourself in the moment getting emotional, meaning you can, you can feel your blood pressure rise. You might be able to feel some sweats. You might even get a headache. I don't know what that emotional trigger will be for you, but the idea is that you need to catch it. And if you can do that, you can start taking some different action uh, with yourself as far as being a contrarian thinker. So I talk a lot about on this podcast about financial education, and we talked a lot about financial education on the previous episode. That's why I strongly encourage you to go back and listen to that. That was a lot of, of fun for me, uh, and it was it was very good. Uh, Gary, once again, if you're listening to this, I truly appreciate you coming on and sharing what you did. And that's my goal. So as you may or may not know, I mentioned in a few episodes ago, my I want to switch kind of the idea with the podcast and start talking about health, wealth, and legacy. And the wealth piece comes along with basic financial education. You need to understand that we are not taught true financial education in our school systems. A lot of times we're not taught at home. And you need to take it upon yourself to get yourself financially educated. Once again, that episode that we I released, uh, uh, the previous episode, that's a great place to start. And then from there, like I said, I'm going to leave you with some resources here at the end of the episode. You can go and start doing some education for yourself. Self-education is the key. You need to learn how to get and find information, gather data, and then make decisions. And that's where when you take the emotions out of it, that's where you're going to be able to make some good decisions, uh, potentially for you and your family. Number three, you need to take 100% responsibility. And what do I mean by that? We, I used to, I'll just, I'll just use myself as an example. I used to be told what to do, when to do it, how to do it, uh, whether it was through school, whether it was from my family, my, my father mainly, right? My father was a lot, a big influence on my life. I'm not saying he did a bad job, but what happened was, is that I started to go down paths that wasn't what I wanted for me and my family. I started to realize that my life was basically beginning to mirror his. And it's not that he had a bad life. That's not what I'm saying, but it wasn't what I wanted. I had to begin taking 100% responsibility for the decisions that I was making for every dollar that came into my existence, for every uh, decision from uh, from my family, from a, a legacy standpoint, uh, from my health. I've, I've got to take responsibility. And if you're not able or willing to take responsibility for the actions that you're taking on a daily basis, for taking responsibility for your emotions when you're getting triggered by certain things going on out there in your environment, that's going to be crucial. You've got to start doing that as quickly as possible. And I would recommend you start making that decision. It's simply a decision. You're going to take 100% responsibility for all aspects of your life and start doing that as soon as you possibly can. Number four, we're going to stop procrastinating. So I have, uh, I don't know if it's, I'm probably, eh, I'm trying to think of how I want to share this. I'm not a person, a type A, meaning I'm not a go, go, go. I'm not a, like, I force myself to do things all the time. I'm, I'm actually relatively pretty lazy, to be honest with you. Uh, but at the same time, I don't procrastinate. When I see things that are in my path that I need to go do, I don't have a problem getting those things done. Now, I think that a lot of times we will get caught up with analysis paralysis. And I think that if we get stuck with understanding or not understanding through the financial education, through getting triggered emotionally, I think that allows or, or contributes to uh, us being a little bit more in a procrastination stage. But we've got to stop procrastinating. We need to understand that, yes, this is a slow train wreck. I've referred to that a couple of times here in the episode so far, but this is a slow train wreck that's happening from a financial standpoint. But at the same time, if we keep procrastinating, think that, okay, I'll just do it tomorrow or, okay, I'll start next week or, okay, we're at the end of 2024. I'll start next year, 2025. You can't do that. You need to begin taking action, small steps, not huge steps, small steps. And that's what I would recommend that you start doing as soon as you possibly can. Number five, we need to seek answers from true professionals. And so, for example, Gary Broad, which is who I had on the episode prior to this, he's a professional. He's been doing what we talked about for over 30 years. He's in the markets every day, managing his own money and making decisions based on the information we shared and the information that he shares uh, in other places. Don't 
get your information or try not to get your information from folks that are not professionals out there in their field. Hire folks if you need to, but definitely don't take advice from somebody that hasn't been there, as that doesn't do what they're saying. So, for example, from even like uh, the real estate or uh, from a real estate standpoint, I've invested in a little bit of rental real estate. And I don't take advice from someone that doesn't have a massive portfolio or hasn't been through the ups and downs of a market cycle, right? Which is basically what we're, we experienced in 08. And that's kind of what we're starting to experience now. I have went out and found professionals that have been there, done that, and understand how to work through and navigate through some of the challenges. That has allowed me then to make better decisions for me, from a financial standpoint, from my investments, to make sure that I don't get caught upside down. That is what I would just really try to encourage you today. Seek professional, true professional advice in terms of whatever you're trying to find out from a financial standpoint, uh, from any type of education that you're looking for out there, uh, including myself. Challenge me. Uh, take what I'm saying and, and counterbalance it with somebody else and see what they're saying. And if you do that, if you get in the habit of doing that, you're going to find out that you're going to get better answers for yourself moving forward. And then step six, and it goes back into the procrastination part. Today, I want you to take action. I just need you to take a little bit of action starting today. Grab the book, go to the library, download a podcast, go on to YouTube. If you're listening or watching to this on YouTube, watch, listen, but study. Try to get yourself involved from a standpoint of really thinking about what the person is saying. Are you being triggered by what somebody is saying? So if you're if you listen to or watch the episode uh, with Gary and I, uh, the episode previous to this, we talk about you, at this point with this financial uh, train wreck happening right before our eyes that you cannot save in dollars if you want to thrive going forward. That is a contrarian thought. If that triggers you in any way, shape, or form, which it very well might, challenge that thought. Where is that thought coming from? Is that a belief that is true? Is that a belief that is coming from somebody else? Is that, have I been taught that from, from somebody else? Now, if you are triggered and that is something you currently believe, go try to find, uh, whether it's myself or go to try to find some other uh, real, true professionals that are talking very similar to what Gary was trying to say. And when you'll hear similarities within the discussion. And when you do that, you're going to start being able to put pieces of the puzzle together. Now, on the flip side of that, you're going to find people on the exact opposite. Go listen to them as well. Take a little bit of time, do a little bit of research, and listen to them as well. When you do that, that's when you're going to get that contrast. That's when you're going to be able to say and think to yourself, okay, is that really true? Is that really what I think? Is that what I believe? Then at that point, you're going to be able to make a decision that is going to change the trajectory of, of the direction that you're heading from from a financial standpoint, from a family standpoint, from a legacy standpoint, it's that's where it all begins. So definitely get started today. Uh, just challenge yourself to do that. As soon as you get done with this episode today, uh, go listen to another one. And I promise you, you can get that started uh, really quick for yourself. All right. So as we start to wrap this one up today, first off, thank you so much for joining me on the episode. I love hopping on here, uh, staring in the camera. Uh, talking to you into the mic and trying to share as much wisdom that I have right through my little bit of experience out there in the world and try to help you grow uh, as much as we possibly can. But I want to leave you with some of the resources that that these were some of the things that I, when I began this journey, like I said, about 15 years ago, really being and trying to think of a contrarian way of thinking. These are some of the resources that I uh, found that has been a huge impact on my life. Some of them are going to be, you've probably heard before. Other ones, hopefully you may have not. And that's kind of the idea. I want to expose you to new ideas, things that uh, might be able to help you uh, begin this process of thinking uh, like a contrarian, but then also getting yourself in a better financial uh, position moving forward for you and your family from a legacy standpoint. All right, so let's start off with some books. Okay, and we're going to start off, first off with a basic one, right? Rich Dad, Poor Dad. If you haven't read Rich Dad, Poor Dad at this point, you need to do that like now. Go get that book. You can find them very cheap. I have multiple copies. I've I've been to bookstores and they'll be selling them for a dollar a piece. I just buy them. I buy them. I have copies. I probably have four or five copies out in my garage right now that I will hand and give to people uh, 
as I feel like they did, they are willing and, and ready to absorb what's being said. I don't just willingly just handing them out, but at the same time, go get that book, read that book. You need to understand basic financial education, and that is the beginning, or it could be the beginning of you understand the basics, uh, assets, liabilities, good debt, bad debt. I won't go on any further than that, but that is going to be a great place for you to start. Number two, uh, this is also uh, part of the Rich Dad community. Uh, and Tom Wheelwright, so tax-free wealth. So if wealth is something that you're interested in, I highly recommend you get your copy of Tax-Free Wealth from Tom Wheelwright. He also has a podcast. Go out there and begin listening to Tom. He's going to begin speaking to you in ways that you might not have ever heard before. But I will tell you that if you consistently read this book, number one, but then consistently listen to him, you're going to pick up patterns. Like I said, you're going to pick up different things that you can do that are relatively simple to do and can, but can quickly move the needle from you uh, being relatively strapped, maybe at this point from a financial standpoint, but then also be able to uh, maybe give you a little bit of more wiggle room uh, areas to potentially invest. Uh, but I definitely highly recommend Tax-Free Wealth, Tom Wheelwright, as a book. So the third, and let's go with, I've got different ones written down. I'm trying to think of what order I want to uh, share them with you. So another one from uh, Robert Kiyosaki is uh, Cash Flow Quadrant. So once again, that would be another fa fantastic resource for you to grab, uh, just consume it and understand what he's talking about from the cash flow quadrant standpoint. The E, the S, the B, and the I, if that doesn't sound familiar to you, then grab that book and start figuring out what those letters mean and why they're important and maybe determine which of the four uh, categories you fall in, in in your own personal life today. Once you understand that, then you can start making dip different decisions moving forward. Now, this one, I don't hear many people talk about. This is the fourth of the books that I wanted to share with you today. This one, I don't hear many people talk about, but this one really changed the way I thought of this train wreck that's coming at us right now. And it's called, uh, it was also by Robert Kiyosaki, it's Conspiracy of the Rich. Now, I understand that title is a little bit of, it could be a little bit of a trigger, conspiracy theories, conspiracy, conspiracy things, right? Whatever. If that's a trigger for you, I apologize. But the book itself, if you read that, you will then begin to understand it really starts to uncover a lot of the details that are going on based on the, the conversation that Gary and I had in the previous episode. It's a great resource. When I read that the first time, it really opened my eyes to what was really going on and understanding that when you see behind the curtain, you can't unsee it. And when you can't unsee it, then you can begin making different decisions moving forward that is going to greatly impact your life, uh, which is exactly what I'm looking for forward for you in the, in the future moving forward. So here are a few podcasts and YouTube channels I listen to as well. Uh, I just want to make sure that I leave these on here as well. And I'm just going to briefly go over those. So the first would be George Gammon's Rebel Capitalist. So I would search for George Gammon on YouTube. He also has a podcast as well by the same title, The Rebel Capitalist. So I, I definitely I encourage you to go follow Gary Broad. Uh, he was in the episode with me previous. At Deep Knowledge Investing. He also has a YouTube channel. Uh, you can get on his newsletter mailing list. Uh, I'm on that currently. He's sharing a ton of knowledge and information just in that email newsletter. Grab that. That would be fantastic. Another one that uh, you might not be familiar with is McElbaney Financial. So McElbaney Weekly Commentary, M-C-A-L-B-A-N-Y Financial. If you search for that on YouTube, uh, they have a weekly commentary. David McElvaney, I've been listening to him for over 10 years, and it's fantastic information. If you want to learn more about the macro, what's going on. So macro and micro, maybe we can just quickly describe that. So macro is like the world economy, which impacts our micro economy, which is literally can be as small as our economy within our own four walls in our household. He talks big picture. And when you understand the big picture, then you can start making some different decisions with than your smaller house, right? Your smaller micro economy. So I definitely recommend you check them out as well. Somebody else I follow is Luke Roman. Luke Roman, G-R-O-M-A-N. Um, follow him on YouTube. It's fantastic. You'll find him on different podcast episodes. I actually, just before I hopped on here to hit record, it looked like he had another episode, uh, another uh, interview that I'm not going to check out here. It, it's uh, I always try to get his latest information. He has a great look at what's going on. Uh, once again, from a macro standpoint, but then he drills down and talks about it from a micro standpoint as well, which is always fantastic. 
And if you want to learn more about gold and silver. So we talked about gold and silver in the previous episode with Gary Broad. If you want to learn more about gold and silver, I highly recommend you look up Mike Maloney, Mike Maloney at goldensilver.com. He has a YouTube channel. He has podcasts. He has content all over. But if you want to learn about the monetary metals and what their purpose are, how you could potentially invest in them, I highly recommend you go find Mike Maloney. He will describe to you in many different ways. A lot of it is free content. His books are fantastic as well, but he can definitely help you start the process. If you're just beginning to scratch the idea of, of the precious metals as an investment or as a savings, it's not a, really an investment. It's really savings because you're saving true money. If you want to learn more about that, I highly recommend you go out there and follow Mike as well. So there you have it. I know this might have been a little bit of a longer solo episode than I've done in the past, but I just wanted to share a little bit more of my thoughts about being a contrarian and how if you can have the courage to think a little differently than the most of the folks that are, whether it's in your close proximity, your family, your friends, uh, even the mainstream media, uh, you can't follow that religiously. You can't think that what they're sharing with you is 100% accurate. Some of the information may be, but a lot of it is not. And if you begin to think for yourself based on the, the six steps or six ideas I shared with you earlier, and then dive deep into the content, uh, the ideas, uh, the resources I shared with you as well, I'm telling you, you can begin to move the needle forward for yourself and really start to build some wealth, build a legacy for you, for your family, for future generations. That's what I'm trying to do. As I mentioned at the beginning, this was dedicated to my grandson, Rowan. And that's the idea. I'm doing this for him. I'm doing this for his family. I'm doing this for future grandchildren and my current children as well Uh, and my family. That's what I want. And that's what I want for you and yours as well. So thanks for joining me. Uh, Like and subscribe if you're watching this on YouTube. Share this with your family and friends. Uh, Leave me comments, uh, uh, reviews on the different podcast platforms. I would greatly appreciate it. Trying to get more information uh, shared with you on the Rich Wine Podcast. Trying to find great guests. If you have great guest ideas, or if no folks that can help me spread the message, I would greatly appreciate that as well. So go out there, have a fantastic day, and I look forward to coming back with the next great guest, the next solo episode coming up very soon. We'll talk then. Bye now.